All right, welcome back to another Harmonious at Lunch. We have another fascinating guest for you today. I'm super excited to dive in. Just as a reminder, Harmonious, what is Harmonious? It is the business architecture that provides you the context to filter all the content and noise that comes at you throughout the day. This podcast would be noise if I didn't tell you how to hear it. And that's our whole goal here is how do you take everything that comes into your mind, into your business, and you actually make that useful knowledge that you can then apply to your business and your growth. Quick update about us here at What If. I shared this on our most recent episode yesterday. We just launched our five-day boot camp. It's coming up in just a few weeks, so make sure you go get signed up, whatif.com slash navigate. What we did was we understood that for people to come in and understand this architecture, you need to have the foundation of your business rock solid. That's how we implement everything. We tie everything back to your foundation, your core, core values, mission, vision, and how do we use that to launch you forward, especially in 2024 and beyond to meet your goals. So enough about me. Let's get to our amazing guest today. We're going to talk about bringing energy to the boardroom. As you can tell, I have no shortage of energy. I'm jacked up. I love Wednesdays, Gina. It is so good to have you here. Welcome to Harmonious at Lunch. Uh, Thank you so much. I am so excited for today. I can't wait to dive in. So energy, bringing energy to the boardroom. I don't think it's the kind of energy that I have. I think we're, let's, let's get past that. It's a different kind of energy. I am jacked up, but tell me a little bit about, uh, about you. What is the kind of energy you specialize in? I am an intuitive energy healer. And the fun part is, is I come from the corporate world. So I come from the boardroom. And what I've learned is for us to really succeed and go after the dreams that we really want to accomplish in life, it's all about coming inwards, learning our energy, learning who we truly are, learning the gifts that we are born with, and then releasing the gunk, the stagnancy, the blocks that are creating those roadblocks blocks as we are accomplishing our dreams. Yeah, that's a fascinating background. At at What If, we always talk about how the corporate world is broken and the businesses that we've all been taught to model are not operating on an efficient model. So it's really cool to see that this is your background. Tell me, how did this kind of show up for you when you were in the corporate world? And what, what what was that realization process like to bring you to where you are now? I, the the biggest thing that I loved about the corporate world was the people I worked with. I loved how we were all different and unique and really finding the tools and the gifts that we all had and showcasing that in the jobs and the careers that we did. And it was actually when I was going through one of the hardest things in my life. My daughter got, was super sick and she had to travel across countries for some medical care and her and I were living back east in Baltimore. And it was in that hotel room where I was caring for my daughter. My husband and son were back in Arizona. And I learned of something called human design. And I was infatuated with it. And I learned this about the energy that we are born with. This is not energy that we are kind of come to get like personality tests in the corporate world, they tell us like, this is how you're supposed to be. You're a personality or you're this personality. This is your core energy. And I learned that in this hotel room and I started just diving in, incorporating it with my teams in the corporate world, watching how little tweaks were just like improving their performance. And I'm like, okay, there's got to be a way to bring this energy tool into the corporate world because so many of us live and breathe in the boardroom. Mm. Yeah, I and mean, that's that's quite the backstory and um, you know the path to get here. Can you tell me though, when you just started exploring this, what what did that look like with the first team you brought it to um, when you were still when that was your job? What did what did that look like? What was your first sort of outcome and realization that this could be something? I had a phenomenal leader who really believed in me and we were having an executive team meeting and I approached her and I'm like, I have something that's a little bit different. It's a little bit hippie, but I want to present this to us. It's the seven of us in this boardroom and I want to try something. And she's like, 
you know what, let's do this. So I brought together and I took everybody's birth information because that's what human design is based off of. It's based off of your birth data. So I compiled and pulled all of their charts and we had a conversation. And I think one of the biggest things that was taken away in that meeting was we are conditioned that everything needs to be an open-ended question. Like, what are your thoughts? Tell me your thoughts. And there are so many energy types that don't don't resonate with that. It's just not ingrained. So knowing that about the individuals in that boardroom of if you take that question and tweak it just a little bit and saying, Gina, do you have some thoughts on this? Because I'm somebody that needs choices. I'm like, yeah, I actually do have thoughts on this. Let me tell you what I think. And it was bringing that information into the boardroom that the seven of us sitting around this table, we all don't resonate with open-ended questions. And so much in the corporate world, the entrepreneur world, they tell us that you have to have those big open questions, but a lot of energy types shut down. They have lots to share, but we're just not asking the questions right for that specific energy. Mm, that's interesting. And shame on me because I've only asked you open-ended questions to this point <laughs> in the podcast. <laughs> But see, it's okay because that's the beauty, beauty of this is when you learn that about yourself, when you know, like, I know I need choices so I can now take your questions, reformulate it in my mind and be able to answer that for you. But if I didn't know that little tidbit about myself, I would probably struggle with this conversation because I'd be like, oh my gosh, what should I talk about? Mm. Yeah, that's a that's an interesting perspective. And uh, I don't have time in the next 10 minutes to learn the different types and form the questions the right way. So I'm going to I'm going to rely on you to just filter that for me. Um, but then, OK, so can you can you break down a couple of these different um, you know, types of people and what that would look like in the form of asking questions or or in a meeting in general? Yes, absolutely. So there's two energy types that actually need questions. And with those two energy types, they actually make up the most energy in this world because these energy types that in human design world, they're called generators and manifesting generators, and they need choices. But the beautiful thing about why there's so many of this energy type in the world is this energy type creates energy for others to really feed off of because not all energy types create energy naturally. So by really taking care of each individual gift on the energy type, it really opens us up to be able to share those true gifts about us. So there's other energy types that say, for example, they need to be invited to things. And knowing that about yourself or maybe about an associate you work with, that would just be reframing that question of, would you like to share your thoughts? And they're like, wow, you're inviting me. You're inviting me in to share with you. So yes, I let me tell you everything I want to tell you. That's awesome. Um, so I want to take this opportunity to just put your website on the screen. If any of this resonates with you watching, listening, I want you to go check out Gina's website um, and, and see what she's got there for you. And I know on Instagram, you also have, what was it you told me about? You have a PDF that people can download? Yes. If you follow me on Instagram, I will actually link you in to a PDF that I've made of uncovering what your biggest dream is. Because so many times we, we don't necessarily know what we want, that next step. And I have laid out the plans on exactly how to identify what that next step is for you. Mm, that's so cool. Um, so definitely follow Gina on Instagram, uh, go to her website. We'll put all of that in the show notes. If you're watching the replay, uh, for those of you watching live, just check back and, and we'll have that stuff there. So, all right, we have these different, uh, we, these different personality types, the energy types. Um, how many are there in total? There's five energy types within human design. So that's our core energy. And then inside of those, there is individual gifts that specifically make you you. So when you actually look at a chart, 
you can tell the way you process your emotions. You can tell your biggest fears. You can tell the way that you show up when you walk into a room. And it's learning these little things about you, things that you may have already known about yourself, but it's taking that information and knowing. It does not matter if I'm in the boardroom, if I'm with my family, if I'm with my friends, if I'm in the supermarket, this is who I am and these are my gifts. So instead of trying to fight these gifts, let's embrace them because that opens up a whole entire world of you sharing what you are meant to share in this world. Yeah, that's amazing. I, I love the concept of just leveraging what you have um, in both in business and in your energy, your personality, whatever that may be. Um, it's so powerful to just know that about yourself. And, and I love that you teach people how to do that. Um, so how do you figure out what what energy type you are? Do you, is there an assessment or what, what does that process look like? Yep. It's super easy is I will simply just pull your chart and all you need is your birth data. So your birthday, your month, your day, your year, the time that you were born. So the hour and the minute, morning or evening and um, your location of birth. Because what that does is it maps your exact energy of how you entered this world. So it takes kind of a snapshot of where all the planets were when you made your entrance into the world. Okay, that's interesting. So is it a kind of astrology based or how would you classify that? It's a sister of astrology. So astrology is very like general of, you know, I'm either a Virgo or a Taurus or a Capricorn. This actually takes it and goes one step further and goes, these are very specific gifts that you were given, that you were given in this lifetime. And it's learning those gifts and learning to work with those. That is very cool. Okay. So then let's, let's kind of tie this together and, and move it towards the business aspect of it. So you came from the corporate world, you helped your first team. Now you help leaders, you help individuals within companies maximize their performance. How can this, let's take it from the leadership perspective. I, if I'm a business owner and I come to you and I'm like, Hey Gina, either I need help or my team needs help to leverage our skill sets and move forward. What are you going to do with us as a team now that you're on the other side of the corporate world and working with potentially small businesses? Yep, absolutely. So I have a very unique formula is first, let's learn the energy. So let's take a look at your team and let's learn together as a group. Um, I put together some really cool um, group sessions. It's literally 90 minutes to two hours of let's get to know you. You know what? This is our group together as a whole. These individuals, these are really awesome gifts. These individuals, this is where they are really good at succeeding in. Let's bring us together. Let's learn about each other and how we can best communicate. So that's step one. And then we can even dive further of if you see that your team may be struggling with something, there's something that you need them to overcome. There's a challenge. We can actually dive into the energy, find what is that core belief that's causing it, Let's release it so your team can continue to thrive the way that you have always imagined your team thriving. That is so cool. Now, if, if this were a session, one of those mm -hmm. sessions with me as the leader and the team, how long would it take for you to fix me and my poor question answer asking ability <laughs> and to be able to turn that and ask you a question that is best designed for you to be able to answer? You would be able to walk out of a session in 90 minutes, understanding my energy, understanding your energy and anybody else's energy in that room. You would be able to learn about yourself and learn how to better communicate with the individuals that are part of that special team. Well, it is so unfortunate this podcast is only 15, <laughs> 20 minutes. So. <laughs> I appreciate you putting up with me, um, but then, okay, let's flip it from the employee side, the team member side. What do you see in terms of uh, elevation and communication or team bond on the back end of, of one of these sessions or a number of these sessions? 
It's learning about each other. So the other piece, so I love like how we answer questions and so forth. But the other piece is you got to remember we're humans and we have emotions. And when you understand the way you're designed emotionally and how your coworkers are designed emotionally, it opens things up because some people in that boardroom will go and they can be in a great mood or in a cruddy mood for no reason. There's other individuals out there that will always have a reason for their emotions. So when you put those two together and you understand the way you're designed emotionally, think about how that could amplify a relationship and also think about how that can really maybe torment a relationship. Because if somebody walks in in a cruddy mood just because that's how they're designed, but then they change within five minutes amazing. But what about that person that picks up on that and they pick up on your emotions and now they're in a cruddy mood and they don't know how to release it because they're designed emotionally different than you. So learning that about yourself and your coworkers can create harmony in the boardroom. Wow. Harmony. If only there was an architecture named harmonious <laughs> designed to create harmony in your business. Gina, did you say that on purpose? I don't know. It I actually just it. came out and I didn't put two and two together. Until you said that. Oh man, this is so perfect then. So I swear I didn't pay Gina anything for that. <laughs> so let's tie this to the harmonious architecture. Then we'll wrap up and get you back to your workday, back to lunch. Um, so it, we are obviously talking about home. Humans optimize in a meaningful environment. When you optimize the employee, you optimize their environment, you maximize the output that you get from that person. And I, I hate to classify it as output and think about people as widgets. It's not. That's why we call it humans optimize. An optimized human being is just a better human being at work and at home. They're giving you a third of their lives if they're working eight hours a day. It is your responsibility as a leader to optimize your team and your people so that they have a meaningful existence, both at work and outside of work. We're also talking about inspire. When you're doing this energy work and you're looking within, that's leadership. We, we take leadership. We call that inspire because you need to, as a leader, the essence of leadership is inspiring your team to go tackle the mission, the vision of your company. And of course, navigation, I just said it, mission and vision of your company. Um, and that's what we're leaning into with our five-day boot camp coming up, whatif.com slash navigate. You can see how the architecture ties together. Everything links and the leverage is in the links. So Gina, I'm going to put your website back on the screen here. This has been an amazing episode. Uh, again, I have tons of energy because I love this stuff mm -hmm. and I love meeting people like you who are making a difference in companies and you're making them harmonious, which is amazing so please tell me what is the next step if someone resonated with this with this podcast today they want to learn more about you and take that next step what do they have to do reach out to me it's super easy on my um, websites that let's connect let's chat and see how we can bring that magic into your boardroom so awesome all right thank you again gina we will see you next episode on harmonious at lunch we'll tie more things to the harmonious architecture give you the context you need to leverage your business and take it to the next level in 2024 and beyond we will see you then